felt homesick when I was in UK because I was there. It was my first time of be being there for that long. I was there for about a little over, about a month, and um, I just I was watching the news and just feeling very agitated about what was happening in our country. And I was staying in this little attic room and I would just lay down at night and my mind was racing. But I noticed that the nights that it was raining, I could kind of tune into the rhythm of the rain and it became a bit of a nature mantra that soothed me and so that became that song. But the rhythm of the rain in the middle of the night breaks up my bad dreams, calms my fire. It gave me an idea to kind of give, it gave the album shape in my mind of being an album that kind of talks about what's going on with our times right now from a very personal perspective. And Amelia's got such a such a uh, powerful voice and a, and, and a vision and a, and a drive to do what she does. And I, I think the, the, the best thing that, that you can do is just not get in the way of that and, uh, and just, just really facilitate somebody's vision. So I, think, I think that's the, one of the great secrets about producing is just get the right people together and see what happens, you know, and obviously let let magic happen and, and, and steer things a little bit, but really, you know, Amelia had a vision collecting these songs, and uh, definitely I, I, I kind of maybe uh, uh, stewarded a few things along, but she had a vision. It really, it's, it's something, someone to bounce ideas off of, and, uh, and I think uh, it came together so well. This record is a beautiful piece with so many different facets, different points of view. Um, you know, there's comedy, there's tragedy, there's, there's, uh, there's you know, political issues, there's emotional, per deeply personal issues. It's got this wide range of things that really can connect with a lot of people on a, different, on a lot of different levels. And uh, that's the kind of record everybody dreams of making, you know. Bully came proud, mean and thin. He said, give me all your money, and he said it like a king. Said it like a king started with, uh, you know, Lori McKenna's children being bullied on the bus. And I think it's fair to say that in our political system at this moment, we have some big old bullies. And so it's a song that goes from a child to the powers that be. I don't know, it just feels like, I mean, definitely as an artist, there's no middle class. like. About 10 years ago, I was making more than I'm making now. I just see the poor people getting squeezed out, like, just get rid of them. Just, just kind of exterminate them. Somebody told me, as I was getting on stage, somebody... Uh, I think, you know, another song, I was just talking about the way that I felt, um, often kind of put down as a woman for being my age and for just being a woman and for not dressing like women are supposed to dress and it's it's a very subtle message that I get but I get it often and so I started writing this song about that and I finished that um, that one up and actually I finished that one here in Nashville with my friend John Hadley Find something cheap that looks good on you. Oh man, every woman in the room is kind of like, you know, listening for a minute and then they're like, you know, like, I mean, I literally can see the change come over the, the gals in the audience and it's pretty funny, yeah. As a woman, I'll go into a radio interview and that's the first thing people will bring up and I'm like, I've just started saying, would you say that to a guy? Would you say that to Bob Dylan? Would you ask him what it's like to, to write songs and be out in the world at your age? Like, no, I don't think so. People would say, you really need to dress a little more sexy. You need to get shed your glasses, get some contacts. 
You know, I used to have short hair that spiked, and I had so many men say, you know, you're so pretty if you could just grow your hair long and, you know, just wear something low cut and you know, get a bra that kind of gives you a little cleavage. And <laughs> it's true, it's like crazy. Somebody told me just be real. I woke up one morning to find that this thing called the Nashville Statement had been written and it was all over Facebook and it was these church groups coming together to condemn gay marriage and to me when people condemn gay marriage they're basically saying gay people aren't okay you're sinning you're not okay you need to you need to convert <laughs> um, so I just got really upset I was like no way this is crazy and I also felt like I live here in Nashville and I've never experienced bigotry since I've been here. I, I remember moving here and feeling like I'm a gay woman moving to the South. This is frightening, but I never had a problem and I've always been treated with respect in my city here in Nashville. And so to feel like they were calling this thing the Nashville Statement, I got really bent out of shape. So, but this felt like bigger than a song and it felt important and so I emailed all my friends and everybody got right back just saying oh man I would love to do that and everybody was willing to get together and do a practice and I taught them the song and a couple people from UK that I know my friend Danny Nichols and uh, my friend Yola Carter just happened to be in town and they came by and it just was like this huge like anti-bigotry choir singing about homophobia and just how it feels. So it really, it touched me. I mean, I just was like walking on air because I just felt like people really cared. And you know, it honestly kind of healed something in me. This is how it feels. This is how it feels. It's kind of amazing because sometimes I'll look at, out at the audience and I'm kind of telling the story of the song and I'm like, this guy's going to be weird about this. This guy's going to be weird about this. And you can't, you can't judge a book by the cover because it's often the people that I think are going to have an issue with it that come up afterwards and go, man, I love that song. I'm so happy you wrote that. Like the most straightest, whitest dude who I thought was some bigot, you know, he's just like, Thank you for the song and kind of like loving on me and it's just beautiful, you know. Yuma, you've got a lot to think about. Why'd you go cold on a train going south? You're talking in my head most every day. Why'd you have to go and leave that way? I knew I was going to write a song, but his Yuma's brother asked me to write a song, so then I felt like, man, I have to make this song amazing, because Yuma was a beautiful, amazing person, and um, I just thought Ben is the guy. He's so sensitive. So Yuma was the first time that Amelia and I had gotten together to write, and uh, it was a really, really special experience. Um, sometimes, the first time you're in the room with somebody writing, it takes a little while to each other to, to click and connect um, because it can be quite hard to be vulnerable with somebody in the first write. But with Yuma and with Amelia, it was just, we just hit it off. And she painted this wonderful picture of her friend and told me about his story. And, you know, and really, I just, I think all we were trying to do was to honor Yuma, honor his story. and. Uh, it was very special, as if we were, you know, I, I, I didn't know Yuma, but I felt I knew him that day. I, you know, sometimes you write a song and you do feel that there's another energy and another, you know, just another, uh, you're connecting to something bigger. Wind in the trees and the sycamore leaves, blowing like they do, like they threw. Yeah, the Worry Dolls were very young women, and I went into that right thinking, like, I'm gonna have to like, you know, take charge here. And, uh, and man, I got in there and they like kicked my ass. <laughs> I mean, they were like, it was not at all like I was 
leading the right. I mean, in fact, I was like kind of obeying them, and uh, it was a it was a great experience. It, it co-writing always teaches you not to uh, put people in boxes, or you just never know, and and every time is different, you know. Cloud started with an Instagram photo, uh, which is why the word Instagram later made it into the chorus. That didn't happen until I was in the UK, but I, I started writing Little Cloud after I played in Little Rock and took a picture of a Little Cloud on my way out of Little Rock. You just see America in this different way and it just gives me hope and, you know, I think that song of all of them has this hope about America, and I really believe in that hope. We'll hope for a better day, we'll something anyway. You know, Pink Cloud came kind of, that was the last song written for the album, and um, that came after the UK version. And it was about how it's been hard, and there is still a Pink Cloud. And in my mind, that kind of went along with Little Cloud, you know, it was the two clouds that kind of had some hope and they're bookending the, the album and, uh, and then Will came in and you know the thing about Will okay everybody knows he's a great guitar player but that man can sing dude can freaking sing his ass off and you know I was almost like should I re-sing my part? <laughs> I've never felt like my job as a songwriter is more important it, it's not about the money it's not about the fame it's about sharing your gift and trying to make a difference. Amelia is, is one of my favorite people. So, and I th honestly think that's the most important thing when you're creating with somebody. I love what Amelia does. She's honest, she's an honest artist. She's a real artist. Um, I really respect that and uh, you know, she, you come across writers in this world who you know who are in it for the real reasons and for, and they've got a lot of integrity and, um, and I try to, I, I try to work with those people and, and Amelia has that in spades. She's a troubadour, she's out there speaking her truth and that's what the world needs nowadays. At the end of the day, what we're all trying to do is express something personal in the hope that it connects with something universal. And that, that means it doesn't matter where in the world you, you write a song. There's no borders, there's no, you know, our accents may be different, but we're all trying to do the same thing.